Okay, guys, I thought I'd uh, show you <clears throat> uh, what I've got here and how to take care of an issue you may have when you have one sump pump up higher than another. Okay, so this front sump pump that you see, that's all the way to the bottom of the crock. The one that you see in the back here, the background, that one has been raised an inch and a half by setting it on a 2x4. Now the reason for that is because uh, if one pump goes out, I have a backup pump. Also, if they're both at the same level, they would both come on about the same time, which would be useless. There'd be no reason for that. So by putting the one pump, and in my case the back one that you see here, by putting that up on a 1x4, okay, inch and a half, higher, that will come on later. So when the front pump activates, that back pump will not come on. Should the front pump, some pump, uh, fail, now I've got my backup system. Obviously, if the electric goes out, I'm screwed. But, uh, and, and, and uh, there's no way that these battery-operated ones would last because sometimes this thing could run for a whole day, you know, depending on uh, how much water's coming in. In fact, you might be able to hear it, uh, the trickling around my foundation. It's been raining the last couple days. The pump hasn't come on, but we've had some, quite a bit of rain the last couple days. Uh, by the way, this uh, piece that you see here, I'm working on a system in which if I want to get a uh, gasoline powered pump should the electric go out and then I don't have any sump pumps and water backs up I'm working on a system to uh, have something permanently in place other than the uh, gas operated uh, sump, uh, sump pump which would be placed outside so that that's what this this is right here but uh, so the issue there, there's an issue that I that you might run across when you have one pump sitting up higher than the other one now just so that you know I do have as they tell you I do have a uh, holes drilled uh, a small eighth inch hole I think it's actually three sixteenths where they recommend so the pumps don't cavitate but as you'll see here when I demonstrate this you can still have a problem and um, so this is what I did. This is what I have found takes care of this. Okay, so the sump pumps that I have are two Coleman's. They're one horsepower, 5,300 gallons per minute. Very nice sump pumps, very happy with them. Now I don't know if Coleman makes them or they have somebody else that makes them, but uh, this has been a very good pump. In fact, at the time I bought four of them. Two that are in there, and then uh, two that are brand new should I need them. Now these do have so this is a lifetime warranty. I was told when I bought these at Menards, you bring them back, they replace them. But in the meantime, if, you know, anytime you have an issue with a lot of rain, you know how sump pumps are, you'll never find them. So that's why I thought, well, let me have backups. Sometimes you just got to spend the money. And while I'm getting the other one replaced, if it goes out, then I've got it. And the kind that I have has the float that rises. There's your float. So as the water level rises, this float comes up, it'll hit the switch, it'll push it up, and it'll activate it. I, I either like the float type like this or a pressure switch. I've used pressure switch ones too. And uh, so this one just so happened to come with the float. Uh, and it, it's great because there's plenty of room in the crock to put two of them in. Now there are some some sump pumps that have like an arm that... that, that, that uh, the float would be actually on the electrical cable and it would then rise with the level of the water. I don't know if there's like a mercury switch or some kind of a switch in there. Well, 
that to me is useless because it may work with a crack but you know to me I'd rather have something like this that you know the space that it's going to take where the other one is going to take up a lot more space especially if you want to put two sump pumps in one crock but again that's just my opinion I've never used them because I've never had the uh, inclination to want to so I'm not saying they don't work I'm just saying for me they wouldn't be in they wouldn't be a, uh, a possibility so what I'm going to do now is turn the water on which is what you see in this green hose I've got it stuck down in the water so you don't have to hear it gurgling so that way you can hear the uh, the water or the sump pumps come on and then you don't hear the splashing around of the water going in so what will happen is this front sump pump being at the very bottom the floats gonna activate first where the rear one won't eat, won't activate because it's an inch and a half higher so we're gonna simulate here what would happen when the front pump is working properly so let me turn on the water and when it does activate that float you will hear it uh, you'll hear the pump the front pump kick on once it kicks on I will then shut the electric off to it so that the second the rear pump some pump which is an inch and a half higher will have to activate and then that that's what I want to show you what's going to happen okay let me shut that front let me shut the electric off I've got the electric off to that front sump pump so now what's going to happen is this is going to simulate that the front one failed and the secondary one which is an inch and a half higher is going to come on but I want to show you what's going to happen okay even though and I said in the, as I said I've got the holes drilled where they tell you to drill these 3 16 holes for air for cavitation but I want you to see what's going to happen and I want you to keep your eye on that pipe I'll put some uh, light on it so you can see that little thin pipe there Now the pump's been activated, but it's not pumping. As you can see, it is not pumping. See the water coming out, out of that thin pipe? Now watch. The water just, it just pumped it out. Now we're not going to do anything else. We're going to let it pump back in. And I'll describe everything here later what's going on but we're gonna let this pump up just like I said as if this front sump pump is not working so we're now working off of the rear sump pump which is an inch and a half higher and you see what I you see what happened there for it to initially take off you'll find this time it'll go right off no issues I want to do this in real time so you, there it is it went off no issues no hesitation no hesitation whatsoever it took the water right out so we're gonna let this go one more time I'm gonna, I want you to see it one more time that there's no issues with the rear pump pumping out okay and then I will turn on the front pump which will then bring it lower than what it should be Now this little water that's coming out is going to do that and I'll show you how I adjusted that because obviously there's water I'll show you how I got it plumbed it's going to do that which is no issue there it is no hesitation pumps it right out okay 
Let me go ahead and turn on that front sump pump. So I, sh I turned that front sump pump on, I took it down. What's going to happen is it's taking it down below the level of that secondary sump pump we have that my, my flashlight's shining on. So we're going to have that same issue now where the water's gotten below the inlet of the uh, sump pump and it's going to do the same thing, it's going to hesitate. When it wants to kick on it's going to hesitate but it will then it will kick on and you won't have an issue thereafter. See it hesitated? And there it goes. Now I'm going to let it go one more time, just like this, to show you that once it gets going, it'll continually go. You will not have that issue. The secret, and I'll explain everything, is going to be in the way I've got this plumbed with that, that, little, that little small pipe there, which is basically, I have the same setup that I have here on this, but I've got that pipe on the back one since it's setting taller. But that's the secret. There it is. No hesitation. Took right off. And that'll continue to do that time after time after time. Okay. Once it's done its initial hesitation, there is no issue with that higher standing pipe. Okay. Again, this is going to simulate that front pump. This front pump has went out. My secondary pump is going to take over. We'll let it just one more time so that you can see absolutely no issue. And without doing what I've done here, that pump would just continue to run and not pump. There it is. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and describe to you what's going on here. So here's what we've got, guys. This is my front pump plumbing. This goes down to the sump pump goes up and out the wall and what I did and I actually did this a long time ago and it just happened to work out good for that secondary one I wanted a way that if I had to get into this pump I didn't have all of this water coming out of this pipe that's that's in this two inch PVC pipe so what I did put a 90 in it and it I can't think of what this is called but it's a swooping T it's not a straight out T it swoops down there's a name for it can't think of it <laughs> and then I made it to that this 90 that goes straight down and these are again two inch then I've got a two inch to three quarter inch bushing in here and then I've got a three quarter inch nipple and then that goes down into or attached to that is this three quarter inch PVC valve now let me turn my flashlight on so what you'll see here is when I open up this valve, if I wanted to do maintenance on that pump, change it out, and I didn't want water all over hell, okay, before I would pull it apart down here, okay, and this is threaded, and it's threaded in here too, so I got the threaded on kind of, I didn't want to have to glue it, if I ever needed to change this valve, I just unscrew it, put a new one on, whereas this stuff I want glued, I want it permanent, so let me open it up, And you'll see that now the only water I'm really going to have is going to be, you know, below this level. And so when I do pull the sump pump out, I've got very minimal amount of water that I have to work with. Something else I'll point out, point out while I'm at it here is you see this rope? That's marine grade quality rope. I believe it's three-eighths 
And what I do is on the handle down there that's on the uh, sump pump that you would use to pull it out. Rather than get my hands down there, I bought uh, stainless steel uh, hose cl um, rope clamps, stainless steel 3 8 And then I just take that and, 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 and use that to attach it to the handle so that I can ensure that it does not come loose. And then I just bring it up here like this, like you see, and uh, anchor it up here. So if I ever have to pull that sump pump out, I don't have to get my hands down in there. I just uh, have it on that uh, rope. And again, it's marine grade, so it uh, it's a good quality rope. Have not had issues with it over the years. So let me show you what we've got going on that secondary. This was the front, this pipe back here, and you'll see that I've got the uh, um, a one-way uh, valve on it, a check valve. The other one is down on the front one. I've got it different down at the bottom. This one here, I've got it a little bit higher. But that doesn't matter in this situation. But uh, the check valve is that green part there. So what you're going to see is that pipe right here, this, this big fat two inch pipe PVC right there, that's coming out of the uh, sump pump which is an inch and a half uh, taller sitting in there. Okay, and then what you see here this goes to the outside and I've got the same type of T, that same swooping T that goes down, same setup here, 2 inch PVC into the same uh, reducing coupling there from 2 inch to 3 quarter inch and then that goes down into the valve, okay? Now, you might not be able to tell from this angle but I actually have that cut uh, opened up just a little bit because as you could tell when that was trickling this has to be open now obviously when this is open if I had it open up all the way all this water would rush out of this pipe and down here so I wanted to slow that down because in actuality if you need that back pump and the front pump fails and this back one's running and you have it throttled down a little bit like that that's fine a little water coming out is the least of your worries you want that pump running and then once the water issue is done and you no longer need to pump water, this will just trickle down for a minute or two until it's pumped everything out above this level. Okay, after everything's been pumped out of this pipe to this level, it'll stop about here. Then that'll stop trickling, okay? So there's no, there's no issues here with that. That little bit of trickling out of there while that pump is running is no problem. Now, as I said earlier, the reason that I have this extension on here is because with that water coming out, if I didn't have this going down, what would happen is it would just make a mess. So, and this pipe is just hand turned on, okay? I can take that off if need be. I just got it hand tight. But that's the only purpose for this three-quarter inch pipe here is just to minimize the uh, water that's going to get thrown around uh, and it directs it down better. Now as I said with this valve I've got it cracked open that I found the right for myself the, 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 the what I like as far as uh, how much coming out. I will say that if you were to open this valve up all the way you notice the length of time it took before that pump actually activated on its initial you know once that front pump uh, took it down below the secondary one and it took that I don't know 15 seconds whatever that was if this was opened up all the way which would be like this with this valves in line if I had it open all the way that would start almost instantly I mean it, it, it would be very very quick but again the reason I've got this throttled down is because I want to minimize the rush of water that will come in from the pipe work that is above it. Okay, so I want to minimize the water that's going to come in from the pipe there and then into here. So that's the only reason I did it. I find it not to be an issue. 
but if you're going to do something like this and you and you and it's you want you could open that all the way and it will definitely uh, activate that second pump much quicker now this brought me down to one other thought and that is and, and I and I've taken that uh, extension pipe off that you saw on that um, back uh, that higher sump pump and as you can see just because it was down so far but what I wanted to do was what if your electric had shut off you're not home the electric goes out because what will happen then is both pumps will come on but I wanted to see if the front pump failed and for some reason the back pumps working okay or you know say, say it fails I wanted to see what would happen if water technically got up into that pipe and it was water blocking that pipe would this thing still be able to work so as you can see here I've got water above this valve okay so what I'm gonna do is I've got the I'm gonna shut the front sump pump off and I'm going to let the water fill in here and see what happens when this when the secondary wants to go off will it will water will the pressure of the water do anything and not allow that to work so let me turn on okay that pumps off let me turn on the water and we'll see what happens here Okay, the pump was activated, but it's, it's hesitating. It's not running, because the first one took it below. Now, let's see what happens here. There it goes. Now you'll start to see that water level is going to rise because water is trickling back in here. But that just goes to show you that if water was in that tube, up higher into that tube, it'll still work. Now it's going to start going over because you got water that's coming out of here. So let me shut that water off. So I've experimented with this and found this is pretty foolproof as it is right now. Have not had any issues. I fooled with it and fooled with it and tried it and tried it, and it works pretty dang good. I'm going to turn the front pump on so I can take all the water out of there. Then I'm going to pull this off and, and dump it. Now another thing I like to do, and you'll see the uh, the plug up front. I've got that on its own circuit, and you'll see the light in the background. That's that's the other sump pump. That's on its own, its own circuit. So they're both both these outlets are fused on their own uh, breaker at the at the box the 200 amp box I have, and something else I do is I have a a, a three uh, I bought an extension thing like a 12 16 inch thing, and it's got this switch on it, but it basically acts as a breaker too in case something happens. So if I come down in the basement, all I got to do is take a look quick look right there, and I can see whether they're whether both of those are lit up and if they're both lit up then I know that uh, the electrics go into the pumps and then again and when I want to uh, do something like I did earlier in the videos I can shut these off and when the light goes out I know that there's no electric going into the pump which is attached to those uh, extensions